beautiful day since we uploaded our video on our little field trip to uh, stay a night in a yurt in Floyd, Virginia. We had a wonderful time and it was a great place to stay. So we've sat down and kind of weighed everything out for what would be best for us. And so I have a kind of list of things, but we're calling this one um, the yurt afterthoughts and one big financial problem. And I'll get into that in a minute. So some of the great things about the yurt is it's a fast drying in process. You can basically, if you've got enough friends and you plan well enough, you could probably have it dried in in a weekend, maybe three days. Um, it's easy for people who don't have a lot of building skills. Um, it doesn't require a lot of heavy equipment or anything like that. Most people can put it together on their own. It's inexpensive compared to building a conventional home. Most people could probably pull that kind of funding together. And the inside floor plan, this was a big one for me. Um, because the tension ring at the top is basically what holds your structure together. You have no inside structural walls, so you can make the floor plan any way you want. You can leave it completely open, or you can make as many pie-shaped areas as you want. Um, that makes it a really good um, planning tool for you. you it's, it's available for anything you want. Some of the things that are considered cons in our opinion. Um, let me get my list back up here. Um, the first one is, and it's a big one for us, okay? Um, it's cold. It was cold. We, When we arrived at the yurt, it was about 45 degrees outside, and it was sunny. It was a fairly decent day. Um, that night, it dropped down to 29 degrees outside. And when we got up the next morning, it was about 59 degrees in the air. It was cold. Um, they had four additional heaters in the air, and we had those going. They, excuse me, they were little, they were electric heaters, along with a 24,000 BTU mini split. And after the sun set, it ran nearly constantly. Um, to quote Adam and Autumn Raven from their book, a year in a yurt, heating a flashy yurt with nothing in the walls but fancy bubble wrap was a challenge. And now I can see that. Heating is expensive in the sense that using a, a mini split to be a, a large portion of your heating source, it's going to be expensive, especially right now with the way electric prices are going. Um, you know, if you had trees and all over your property and you had a wood stove and could chop all the firewood you want, that might offset some of that expense. Um, but like I said, it was a 24,000 BTU unit and it ran nearly constantly. Outside noise. Um, we were close to um, a major two-lane um, road in the, that ran directly into town and you could hear everything outside. It'd be great if you're living out in the woods want to hear the birds chirping or you know whatever but um, we were close to a road so we heard the traffic and it just so happens um, that night they had a high wind advisory um, the wind blew like crazy and um, no problems with the yurt it was great structurally but we could hear the wind we could even hear the leaves rustling all over the top of the, the yurt so that's something that people need to factor in and the last big issue, um, and it, again, it's a financial one, is that in eastern Tennessee, where we hope to be um, living within the next year, we cannot insure a yurt. Um, I called several agencies in the Johnson City area and was informed that we could not insure the yurt. Why is that a big deal? Well, by the time we get the yurt to where we want it to be with decking, with you know appliances, wood floor, everything like that, we're gonna have a good bit of money invested in it. What happens 
in two weeks after we move in and it burns down to the ground. I don't have that kind of funding to recover a second time. So being able to have insurance on my structure and its contents is really important to us. Um, I just don't have that kind of money. So that was one of the biggest issues for us in this whole scheme of things. I think the other things we could have maybe considered or worked around, but with, um, with that kind of looming over our head, that was kind of a, a kicker for us. Um, one of the things that we are considering is if we were to buy raw land, we are considering a shed to house. Um, I did get really favorable um, replies from the insurance companies on this. Basically, they consider a shed to house in eastern Tennessee. They, they do it like a, a single wide or a, a, you know, a double wide or a single wide. As long as you have the shed tied down just like you would a, a single wide, that's how they would insure it. So that's a big plus. So those are kind of our, our good things and not so great things about the year of experience that we had and what we thought. We welcome your comments and we hope you guys are having a great weekend. And thank you so much for coming by and visiting us again here at Life in Every Season. Thank you.